Hey y'all, welcome to Restless Chipotle Kitchen. Today, we are making a zucchini bread. Actually, zucchini pineapple pecan bread. Now, a Restless Chipotle reader emailed me and asked if I had a recipe for um, zucchini bread. And I was like, yeah, I do, but I don't think I've ever published it. So I told her that I would publish it and get that done. And so I did. And I hope that all of y'all love it. It is delicious. It's, to me, it's just right as a breakfast bread, a, a breakfast bread with a little smear of cream cheese on it or some butter or something like that. Um, I don't want y'all to make this and think that it's going to taste like zucchini pound cake because it is not in it. Now this makes two loaves, so you've got one for you and one for your neighbor, or you've got one for you and one to put in the freezer later, okay? Let's get over to the kitchen and get started on it. So this zucchini bread is so easy and it's the one that I grew up on. My mom used to make it all summer long because she and my dad were avid gardeners and we would have, I can't even tell you how many bushels of zucchini every single year. And zucchini bread was my favorite way for her to get rid of it. So what we're gonna start with is a zucchini. And um, if it's a big one like this, um, it really, you just need two cups shredded. And this one actually was two, uh, the one that was like this, obviously not this exact one, was two full cups once I shredded it. Once you shred your zucchini, you wanna press on it with paper towel or towel to get as much moisture off of it as you can. Um, if your bread comes out soggy in the middle, then it is very likely that you didn't get enough moisture out of the zucchini and out of the crushed pineapple. So be sure that you press down and really get that moisture off. Let it sit in a colander for 30 minutes if you can so the moisture can drain off. Whatever you need to do to get the zucchini pretty dry. Now it's never gonna feel real dry, but um, you just don't want it to be drippy wet, okay? And you're gonna grate it on a box grater. That's the easiest way, unless you have a um, food processor, which mine is on the fritz right now, um, this, these box graters are fantastic. You're gonna need a half a teaspoon of vanilla, a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, one cup of pecans that have been toasted and chopped. You can skip the toasting if you want to, but it sure does make it have a really nice flavor. You're gonna need eight ounces of crushed pineapple. And again, with the pineapple, like with the zucchini, you're going to want to put it on a paper towel or put it on a towel and press as much liquid out of that as you can. You can also put it in a colander and just let it drain, but you want it to be pretty dry. You'll need, ooh, I gotta be careful with this one. You're gonna need a cup of vegetable oil, a light vegetable oil like, um, oh, I use peanut oil because that's what I use, but I know a lot of people have allergies. So you could use um, a mixed vegetable oil or safflower oil, sunflower oil, any kind of light oil that doesn't have any flavor. You're not gonna wanna use olive oil in this. Baking soda and baking powder, sugar, flour, no big surprise there, and and we're gonna need three eggs. So you're gonna take your flour and you're gonna mix the baking soda, baking powder, and salt with the flour. And I always like to kind of push down on it just to make sure that there's no lumps in it. And then add the cinnamon. Once you get the dry ingredients together, just mix those right up. and set that aside. To our mixing bowl, we're gonna add the oil, the sugar, the vanilla, 
and our three eggs. Made a mess out of that one. Now, once I clean up my mess, I'm going to um, take this in, put it in the mixer, and I'm going to beat that until it's all mixed up and smooth and the sugar is incorporated with the egg and the oil. All right, our um, egg, egg and oil and sugar and vanilla are all beat up. And you see how the mixture has just kind of come together in a loose batter? That's what you want. And then make sure that you stop the mixer a couple of times and scrape the bottom so that you can get any sugar that's hiding down there in the bottom. I'm gonna give this zucchini another quick press just to get as much of the water out as I can. And then I'm gonna add it right into our egg and sugar mixture. I'm gonna move that aside. And I'm going to do the same thing with the pineapple. Because as it's been sitting there, it's gotten juicy again. A lot of the water has come out of it or a lot of the juice has come out of it. So I wanna make sure that I get as much of that out as possible. So I'm just gonna press it just like I did with the um, zucchini. And I'm gonna take that and see how that kind of mashes together. It's really dry now. Oops, and I'm dropping it everywhere. That's pretty much how you want it. And I'm just gonna drop that right in to our egg mixture. And we're gonna stir that right around to get it all mixed in evenly. If you try to do this after the flour has gone in, it won't mix in evenly because it'll be kind of clumped together from where you pressed it. So go ahead and mix it up before you put the flour in there. It makes it a lot easier. And break up any big lumps if you can see them. You can't really over mix it at this point because there's no flour in there. So it's not gonna develop any gluten, but you definitely don't want those big lumps. There, looks like we got it. Make sure to get crushed pineapple and not pineapple chunks or um, pineapple tidbits or anything like that. It just works a lot better. Once that's all mixed up, we're gonna go ahead and put in our dry ingredient mixture. Remember, it was our flour and salt and baking soda and baking powder and cinnamon. And we're just gonna put that right in and we're gonna mix that right up just with a few quick strokes. You definitely don't wanna over mix that. Once the flour has started to get, um, has started to get wet, that's when you can go ahead and add the chopped pecans and you're gonna fold those right in. Again, you don't wanna over mix this. You don't wanna over beat it. It's gonna be lumpy. You just want most of the flour mixture mixed in. It doesn't even have to be all the way mixed in. Be sure to scrape the bottom so that you can get everything mixed in well. All right, I think that just about does it. Now what we're gonna do is prepare our pans. I do not know why this won't come off, but it won't. Do you have pans like that? I do, I have a couple of them, and I hate them for pictures and video because it always looks bad. But, you know, I'm not gonna throw a pan out just because it's got some kind of weird stain on the rim. Anyway, it is clean. And what I've done is I've laid the pan down, or the bread pan, um, down on parchment paper, traced around it so I could get an exact size of my pan. And this is a five, uh, eight and a half by four inch pan. Let me look at this one, make sure that I'm reading it right. Eight and a half by four, or eight and a half by four and a half. So that's the size that we're using today. And um, I use glass pans because I love glass pans, despite the fact that this happens sometimes. 
but you don't have to use a glass pan. I get people ask me all the time, um, do we need to use glass pans? And I'm like, no, if you have aluminum pans or stainless steel pans or cast iron pans, use whatever kind of bread pan you have. Um, even the throwaway aluminum foil ones, if you're gonna be making this as gifts. But I just happen to like glass pans and so that's what I use. I'm gonna spray the inside of the pan with um, non-stick spray. And then I'm going to put the parchment down and fit it to the bottom. Fit it right in there. You could use wax paper if you don't have parchment. I like parchment better, but uh, either one is fine. Okay, you wanna fit that to the bottom as much as you can without a lot of lumps and stuff. And then I'm gonna spray it again. Now we're just gonna put the batter in the pans, which you probably guessed, right? And I'm gonna to try to get it in there evenly, but it invariably, I have one loaf that's bigger than the other and has to cook longer and I should probably weigh it out and then do it by weight, but I just don't ever take the time to do that. So we're gonna get that in there just as evenly as possible without making too much of a mess. I love these rubber spatulas because it really helps you scrape out everything from the pan and you're not leaving half the batter in the pan. It's really nice, even though I tend to leave a lot of it on the countertop. I clean up the edges a little bit, and that's probably how that happened. Something got baked on. So I'm gonna clean up my edges. These are gonna go in the oven at 325 for about an hour. So I'll see you back here in an hour or so. Okay, y'all, these have just come out of the oven, and what we're gonna do is the first thing is you want to tip them over on their sides just like that and then cover them with a cloth or a tea towel you're going to leave them like that for three to five minutes and what happens is while they're like that um the they're going to pull away from the side from this side and then what we're going to do is flip them over and let them cool for a few more minutes the other way. And so when you go to take them out, the loaves aren't gonna tear apart or stick or anything like that. It's just the best way to do it. And so easy to get your um, loaves of bread out. And I use this method for yeast breads, quick breads, whatever. So we're gonna let those sit here for a few minutes and then I'll be back. All right, you see that they've really pulled away from the side. And so I'm gonna turn it over and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side for about mm, another three to five minutes. I'll see you in a minute. All right, they've sat for a few minutes. Now we're gonna take them out of the loaf pans and they should slide right out. So we're gonna tip that and slide it right out. And remember that parchment paper that we put on there? It lifts right off, and there you've got your loaf of bread. You're gonna do, I'm gonna do the same thing with this other one, and um, then I'm gonna put them on a rack. What I like to do is to put my cooling rack over the, um, the bread pans to lift them up even more and get some good air circulation going around them. So we're gonna put them right up here, just like that. And we're gonna let those cool all the way. I know that's gonna be hard because they smell so good, but they if you cut into them when they're still too warm, they're gonna fall apart and you don't want that. So we're gonna leave them like that, let them cool, and we'll be back. All right, y'all, here we go. I'm gonna cut into this loaf and see how it is. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be delicious or I will be surprised. My mom used to make this all the time. Look at that. You can see the little specks of zucchini, but mostly it's baked right in there. You can see a little bit of the um, pineapple, but that's pretty much baked right in there. And what you mostly see 
is the uh, pecans. So if you don't want to tell someone that there's zucchini in it, you sure don't have to because they may not even know it. And there it is, absolutely delicious. I'm gonna take it and put it over here on my plate. And guess what we're gonna do? Take a look at that, just, oh, smells so good. It's so moist and fluffy, it's done all the way through and there's no wet spots in the bread, just yummy. All right, let's head over to the kitchen. So y'all, look at this zucchini bread. <clears throat> it's dark, it's moist, it's full of pecans, full of pineapple, full of zucchini. The pineapple has a very light flavor. Um, it's not a strong pineapple flavor, and the zucchini doesn't have any flavor at all. So. Basically what we have is the zucchini and pineapple work together to keep this bread moist. I am gonna put some butter on it. Oh, doesn't that look good? Take a little bite. Mm. So good. I hope y'all will make this. It is so delicious and what better way to use up all that zucchini that you've got in your garden or your neighbors have in their garden or you're finding at the store? And what better way to sneak a vegetable into your kids, right? Put a little sour, um, not sour cream, put a little cream cheese on it, delicious. Put a little butter on it, delicious. I even like it with my mock Devonshire cream. Oh, so good. Um, what else did I want to tell y'all? Because I know there was something. This is not a super sweet bread. Keep in mind, it is not a super sweet bread. It does not taste like zucchini pound cake. It um, is a very hearty country flavor, slightly sweet, but not cakey sweet. If you would like it a little sweeter, you can put in half a cup of brown sugar extra over the two cups of sugar that are in there. So, absolutely delicious. I hope you'll make it. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you'll come back next week. I love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.